So welcome to Unity of Chautauqua. I'm Reverend Barbara Williams, and it is so wonderful to have you here this Sunday morning. Um, this is our 41st year. Wow. Yeah. And this is our sacred space, which is to me one of the most beautiful places on the grounds of, of Chautauqua. So let's begin by standing, and Janine is going to lead us in our welcome song. Lots of voices today. Yeah. <laughs> so there's an expectation there. <laughs> through the world and been in places where we didn't feel that. And yet, and yet, that's what we're here to remember. So take a breath of that. I belong. I belong to this place, this time, this moment. And notice how that feels. Maybe it softens our shoulders and relaxes our whole body. And now let's just hold that as we walk out the door after this celebration that we are here to contribute our consciousness, our attention, our love, our connection, that we will walk into the world and know that we are here by divine appointment. Wherever each of our paths lead us. I belong. Our souls are welcome not only in this moment, but by divine appointment in this world. And so it is. Amen and amen. Okay, so 
This is one of the foundational statements of unity, and it's one that I'm going to um, hold for my lifetime as a learning experience because there are a lot of things that come into my life that kick me out of knowing that there's only one presence mm -hmm. and one power. And so they're my teachers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our decision as to where we place our attention is the biggest gift we give to ourselves, to our families, to our world. And so as we say this, just know that there are people that are going to convince you that they're the power, including our government, right? There's some people right now that I go, oh no, this looks scary. Come back to it, because that's our job. Our job is to come back to the one presence of power and find it in every situation. Is that easy? No. Is it vital? Yes. So let's say this together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotence. So just feel that. Um, we say unity is a positive path for spiritual living, and we have open minds. We, our goal is to open our minds, to touch our hearts, connect our hearts, and to transform our lives. And that's been my experience. So we say we're a positive, practical approach to Christianity based on the teachings of Jesus and the power of prayer. However, I want to add to that that we explore Buddhism and Islam and all those parts, and we find those ways that all those have essential truths for our life. Enter our time of meditation, and Janine is going to lead us into that. Oh, and I'm sorry, Ronnie too. Yeah, Ronnie is from Melbourne as well as um, Janine originally. They are the music team in Melbourne at Unity. Yes. So um, if you're comfortable to just let us do the words and carry you into the space, you can close your eyes if that's okay and just...
in the silence of our hearts, we move away from the outer experience of life and we move into the deep recesses of our soul this morning. In the silence and the quiet peace of the heart, we rest a while and we feel the, the peace begin to move all through our body, our minds. Relaxing our body now and allowing the, the peace to be present in each breath. and allowing the peace to be present in each thought right now. Only peace with each breath in the preciousness of this now moment. Because the truth is that now is where Peace breathes. Breathing peace right now. And now is where love breathes with each breath. moving deeper into a place of love and compassion for ourselves and all others. Only peace now and only love now with each breath. In each precious now moment. In the quiet, sweet place of the Holy Spirit of life. Now is the place where the Holy Spirit breathes. Oh, with each breath feeling the deepening of the awareness of our oneness with infinite life. There is no separation. There is only one. And that one is filled with peace and love and compassion and trust. Because now is the place where life breathes, breathes and moves and has its being through us, as us, in us, all around us. We are immersed in the spirit of life. each breath. Just allow yourself the gift of this awareness now. And breathe. Breathe and be here. Nowhere to go and nothing to do.
Breathe and be here now in the silence. I had with my youngest son um, when he was probably 11 ish. Actually, I'm, I'm looking at the date that I wrote this was 2007. So, <laughs> anyway, um, he asked about, he asked me to tell him what it was like when I was a kid back then. He said, so, we had this little conversation about the kinds of things that I like to do and just about playfulness. And he's the kind of kid that. Even though he's 30, he's still a kid to me. And we play. When he comes, we play. And, um, and, and we like to both get on the grocery carts in the parking lot and <laughs> zoom out to our cars. <laughs> and you can do it without tipping the car over. Because <laughs> he's six feet and I got a better chance. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is called To Be a Kid Again. Um, I'm going to do the chorus part. It's and, and, and then you can sing that with me if you'd like to. Um, we're just gonna make this up as we go along because I never did it as a group group uh, song. Mm. Actually, the last time I did it was at a like a an open mic night, and somebody's what was she three years old? Somebody's kid just actually wandered out of the other room and came up, and she skipped. In front of me, <laughs> as I was starting the song, <laughs> that she was the only kid in the whole place. <laughs> Get back then. 
down Laugh after laugh and splash after splash Can you tell me what it was like to be a kid back then? Can you show me what it is like to be a kid again? <coughs>
And it's an ancient teaching, obviously, 2,500 years. And it has four basic principles. And the principles are compassion, duh, <laughs> compassion, going with the flow, flexibility, and letting go, not being attached, and peace, harmony. And um, uh, I look at play as a way to engage in those four principles and joy. You know, play brings us joy, just like riding in that grocery cart. I think that's so cool. So to take part in life with a sense of lightness and upliftment and joy. And so the Tao of play is the way to live in joy and harmony as life unfolds in all its changes all its changes and its evolutionary changes, which we feel right now so powerfully when you agree, you know? So it all began for me in the fall of 1982. Some of you weren't even born yet, yeah. I bet. <laughs> Um, and it was in Brown's Retreat Center in the mountains of North Carolina. It was beautiful and fall and all the leaves, oranges and yellows and like me. <laughs> and I, I was there for a retreat, um, a leadership retreat with my church at that time, the Disciples of Christ, the Christian church, which I, every time we walk here, we pass that. It was like so cool. I was from, I lived in Sandy Springs, Georgia, which is uh, uh, right outside Atlanta, Georgia. And it was the first church that I attended after I got sober. This was in, um, I got sober in 1977 uh, by the prayers of silent unity. You know, really, this stuff works, I'm telling you. But um, I've been going to AA meetings, you know, after I got out of treatment. And um, so I've been do kind of using that as my spiritual path, and uh, which is a beautiful path, AA, the steps. And then I found this little community, this little Christian church in Sandy Springs, and um, Sandy Springs, Georgia. And they were a bunch of really caring, really caring, compassionate, um, non-judgmental group. In fact, that church had a course in miracles. Wow. The Disciples of Christ. Very progressive church, you know? And it was the church that I, I met and married my husband, Bob McCartney, and we were both really active in the church. Uh, we were deacons in the church, and um, <coughs> it, it was really why I was led to go to Southern Academy in the mountains of North Carolina in 1982. And so, um, so I make my way to this retreat, and um, nothing like this. <laughs> it was just a little retreat center in the mountains, and we were all there for a deepening of spiritual leadership in the Christian church. And the first morning of the retreat, you know, I sat in awe. <laughs> I sat in awe as I watched the faces of a hundred or more adults, mostly ministers and lay leaders, when a bunch of clowns danced into the room at Brown's Retreat Center. Yeah, I'm saying clowns, you guys, with red noses and big shoes, <laughs> you know? And, and so um, we were sitting in a circle on the floor, all these adults with our you know, I've got so much to do faces on. I can't believe there are clowns coming in here. Faces on. <laughs> Serious, stressed out faces on. Responsible for the world. Faces on. And then moved in these silly, outrageous fools. <laughs> you know? And in the background there was, Would you be rich? Would you be rare? Would you go all through your life with so much to chair, where are the clowns? Where are the clowns? And our hard 
a dull heart began to melt. And the clowns began to engage each soul in that circle. I've got God bumps. Woo! Each clown had a bundle that they were carrying. Like a little bundle. It looked like, you know, like a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Really? Tenderly in the manger of their arms. And one by one, hearts opened as the clowns offered each person in that circle a peek inside their bundle of joy. And what? Inside that bundle? Do you know what it was? A bag of sunflower seeds. <laughs> what? Shut the front door. What is that? You know, what in the world? What in the world? But the metaphor was not of this world. You know, it was a symbol of the divine idea that had been planted in each of our hearts each soul in that circle, as each clown connected with each adult in that circle, laughter peeled out in loud echoes off the walls, bounced off the walls, you know, and filled our ears and our hearts with the sounds of harmony, infinite joy. It filled our souls with a remembering of a long ago forgotten little boy or little girl. Laughter opened our hearts that morning, and laughter filled our souls. I think it's one of the most powerful tools we have in our human <laughs> survival kit. You know, laughter heals, and it healed any sense of separation in that moment, in that group. Unadulterated laughter. We bonded. We became. Have you ever had the experience where you laugh so hard you cry? I love that. <laughs> you know? Have you ever laughed so hard that you couldn't stop? Well, that day, uh, we laughed so hard that many of us cried, and our tears cleared our minds and our hearts and opened our hearts wide. And there were tears running from every different parts of our body. <laughs> you know, it was a wonderful, like, cleansing like free moment. And the clowns, those little silly fools, became a link to a long ago forgotten little boy, little girl. The precious child of each of us, which you so beautifully sang about this morning, that child that is still in our hearts. And it, in those grown-ups, these grown-ups who long for a taste of um, the joy and the freedom of their childhood. Harmony and joy. Kids don't know war unless you put a gun in their hand. It's our birthright, you know, the Tao play. From our birth to our death and recycling again. A healing took place in my wounded inner child a long time ago and my wounded inner child met my wondered child and I, I have to say my life has never been the same from that moment a seed idea was planted a seed idea that would lead to an outrageous ministry of play and laughter uh, that would become an international movement. Believe it or not, it became the noble purpose of the unity movement in 2006. And it reawakened um, many of our communities, our unity communities all over the world. Uh, we had in um, Australia and Germany and, and Japan and, and um, South Africa. We had these people coming together on April Fool's Day. <laughs> 2006 to reawaken the world to its divine oneness and the realization that we're all divine playmates here to play with each other you know and play i believe is the sacred relationship that we have with life it goes beyond culture and religion and race and nationality and gender and all that stuff plays about being in touch 
with the joy and the sorrow, the tears and the laughter, and the bitter and sweet of life. It's about experiencing the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, exploring the mystery, engaging the divine mystery within us. And that mystery is not only within us, but all around us. In each moment, the wonder of it all. It's a choice, I believe, that we make each moment to be kind and compassionate, to be fearless and courageous, you know? Like, like, <laughs> like Bart, you know? Uh, it takes courage to be a playmate. It takes courage not to be an old adult. <laughs> you know, it really does. The Tao of play or the planetary play is, a, is about having a wonder and a reverence for life in all its fullness. An evolutionary tool to heal the world of separateness and division. And to be a planetary play citizen, to play full out full out in the kingdom, the queendom of heaven on earth, to travel light and free, to be emancipated through all the stuff that we go through, you know, through our lives, using our evolutionary tools and our evolutionary attributes, what I call the DNA of play, the beginner's mind, the flexible soul, and the big one. So where are the clowns? You know, look around. Are there any clowns? I don't have to look around. Yeah, where are the clowns? So I believe, you all, this is the religious part of my talk. <laughs> I believe that Jesus fulfilled the perfect description of the holy fool. I really do. The holiest of fools. The innocence and the brilliance of the most sacred clown. His words, his stories, his behavior fearlessly brought into focus the oppression of the time he was living in, the powerful Roman Empire and the Jewish temple's religious restrictions. The rigidness of the law, the dogma, which unity just doesn't want to deal with. <laughs> you know? His poor peasant followers were pretty clever folks. Probably like unitics. You know, it's like probably like you know, didn't miss the humor in his uh, parables, which poked fun at the religious structure of their society. Jesus was a holy fool, <laughs> indeed, in word and action, a rabbi. And there's nowhere in the scriptures that you will find that Jesus laughed. Nope. But we all know he did. I mean, go figure, you know? His favorite people were kids. You know he laughed and, and joked and, and played with those kids. Laughed. I cannot conceive a Jesus who didn't laugh. Perhaps the authors of the gospel didn't want to write about it, you know, or mention his humor because they believed that the Son of God was pretty serious business. Just saying, you know. Yeah, we're made in the image and likeness of our Creator. So humor, so much a part of our humanity, hopefully, must also be pretty holy stuff. So there is a story. There's a story about an Apache tribe or Apache Indians, they believed that the creator delighted in making the first humans and how they could do so many things. They could sing and dance and make stuff with their hands. They could do, you know, paint. And... But the great spirit wasn't satisfied, you all. There was something missing in that first human. So the creator infinite creator took the human back to the creation drawing board 
and experiment it with a little of this and a little of that. And then the final last ingredient came and it was clear what was missing. It was laughter. today. I really believe that. We're being called to be holy fools for Christ's sake, for God's sake, for life's sake, to wake up. Wake up and don't go back to sleep. You know, it was in Rumi's inspiring poem, Out Beyond the Ideas of Right and Wrongdoing, there is a feel. I'll meet you there. When one lies down in that grass, the world is too much to talk about. Don't go back to sleep. Don't go back to sleep. Profound. Don't go back to sleep. And today we are being called not to go back to sleep, aren't we? Just turn on the news. <laughs> you know, stay away. We have been in a major wake-up call for many years now, especially in the last three, four years, or longer. Don't go back to sleep. You see, holy fools are people just like you and me. Just like you and me who want to make a difference in the world by standing up for what we believe, having the courage to be spiritual activists, spreading the light in the dark places within us and all around us and becoming a child again. Remembering our divine birthright as co-creators with infinite life. Using our divine natural attributes, the beginner's mind, which is about opening to the new that's coming through. Don't go back to sleep. <laughs> Um, oops, sorry. Um, the um, flexible soul, which is allowing life to unfold and the glow and the flow of infinite love. Don't go back to sleep. Don't go back to sleep. <laughs> you know, and the big wide open heart of a holy fool. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. To awaken to the divine purpose, the wide open possibilities, and allow that divine child within to lead the way to oneness. So don't go back to sleep. We're all being called, don't go back to sleep. We're being called to be spiritual activists of a different kind, acting from the same place of love and compassion that our friend Jesus uh, represented and so many others and understanding to those who
could use some laughter and lightness, holy humor, <laughs> and put more joy back into life. Put more joy back in the world and there will be more world to enjoy. So the first time I stepped out as a holy fool myself. It was that same year, it was 1982, and I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, like I had said before, and I had just come back from that retreat. And um, I was moved to become a clown myself. And, uh, oops, there she is. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was moved to be a clown myself, and um, I learned all about compassionate clowning. You know, like Patch Adams? Remember that movie? I was before Patch. I'll say that out loud to anybody who wants to hear it. <laughs> oh my God, he is so amazing. And that movie, you all, if you have not seen it, Patch Adams, it was amazing. But I learned how to be a clown minister and a minister of the heart. And I went into nursing homes and and orphanages and uh, hospitals for children and the elderly and the infirm. And I learned how to spread joy germs. <laughs> joy germs and be silly and blow bubbles, you know? And I decided to go to Grady Hospital, which is inner city Atlanta. Are any of you from Atlanta or? No. Well, it's in inner city Atlanta. And that was my first clown gig. And I got all clowned up. <laughs> I had my red nose on and my blue wig and, and I had my size 14 and a half high top sneakers and I had glitter and balloons and lots of color of course. My clown name was Angel the Clown. So my mom had made me a costume with wings on the back. And I drove downtown Atlanta in my little blue Mazda RX-7. <laughs> my favorite car of all time. <laughs> Balloons are flying and everybody on the street is looking at this clown with white makeup on, you know, and yelling, hey, clown, hey. And immediately I felt welcomed into that neighborhood. You know, there was no separation there. And I made it to the hospital and I went up to the seventh, eighth, something like that floor and I pulled out my bubbles and my balloons and I played with the kids as best I could because those kids had so much courage, so much faith and so much hope. And I was in awe. And the healer clown, me, <laughs> became the healed clown as I learned one of the greatest lessons of my life. And that is that giving and receiving are the same. And I, what I gave that day, I received so much more in return. And so after playing in awe with the kids and their families and the doctors and the nurses even, I said my goodbyes and I made it to the elevators and tears were still in my eyes and I did, everything came, just got really clear. And I, I pushed the down button on the elevators, and around the corner comes this big dude. He's got a boom box on his shoulder, probably visiting his family up on the seventh floor. A pack of cools in his, you know, in his sleeve, rolled up sleeve, and sunglasses on. A cool dude meets clown. And our eyes connect, <laughs> and I, I couldn't think of anything to do but just get down on the floor. And that's what I did. I just got down on the floor. And do you know that he got down on the floor with me, with his boombox and his cools? <laughs> and we played together. We played together like it seemed like for hours. And I pulled out this little green frog that I had in my pocket, my clown outfit had. And, and we played with it on the floor like little kids. 
You know, it made no difference the color of our skin, our backgrounds, where we came from, our politics, none of that mattered. In that moment, you all, we played together like little kids. This big dude and this silly, outrageous clown. I didn't, never knew his name, never got his name. It didn't matter, you know? But in that moment, we became friends forever. He was the teacher for me of the big, wide, open heart of a holy fool. You know, I believe that everyone is waiting to be asked to play. Like you invited us up here to play with you this week. Thank you again. But we're, we're all being, wait, we wait to be asked to play, you know? And planetary play and the Tao of play is the divine invitation to play in our oneness, to enter the mystery of infinite play. We've been looking for our divine playmates, I believe, all our lives. I know I have. And I believe that it's really important for us to find those divine playmates. You know, we've been looking for our divine playmates, um, our inner playmate, playing with ourselves a sacred relationship that we have with ourselves, infusing more love in our lives and more joy in our lives, living lightly and, and being more gentle. And our outer playmate, we've been looking for that one for sure, our sacred relationship with other people. Everyone has been waiting to play. And our divine playmate, source, infinite life, We've been looking for that all our lives, and we've really not had to look any further than right here. And we've been looking for our divine playground, the sacred relationship that we have with this beautiful planet that we call home, heaven on Mother Earth. Heaven on Mother Earth, you know, and it is up to us, you and I, <coughs> We, too, make just this happen. Heaven on Mother Earth home. So I want to ask you a question right now. How can we contribute to creating Heaven on Earth? How can you contribute today to Heaven on Earth? So I have an invitation, and that invitation is for us to play together <laughs> for just a moment. It's not scary to play. It's really safe. So I, I'm going to invite you all to stand up, and I want you to turn to somebody you might not know. Just turn to someone you might not know. So what we're going to do, if, if this is a prayer that Gandhi, Gandhi wrote this prayer many years ago, but it's a beautiful blessing. And so does everybody have a partner? Okay, I invite you to take your partner's hands if that's comfortable for you. <laughs> and, um, and I'll say a one, one line and then you repeat it and say it to your partner, okay? okay. I offer you my peace. I offer you my peace. I offer you my friendship. I offer you my friendship. I offer you my love. I offer you my love. I see your beauty. I see your beauty. I hear your need. I hear your need. I respect your feelings. I respect, I respect your, feelings. your feelings. My guidance comes. My guidance comes from the highest source. From, from the, the highest, highest source. source. I acknowledge that same source in you. I acknowledge that same source in you. May we play together. May we play together as brothers and sisters. As 
brothers and sisters, in unity, in, in, unity, in, peace, in peace, in peace, and in joy. And, and in joy. joy. Namaste. 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 Amen. Amen.